Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome. My name is Gregory Scott, and I am the President and CEO of Community Action Partnership of Orange County. I'm, I'm very excited to be sharing this moment, very excited to, um, to be here and introduce our guest today. I am joined here today um, with one of our community partners and my friend, um, Tammy Tumling. She's a Chief Operating Officer at the Orange County Community Foundation, one of our great partners um, in the community. And um, as I often say, Tammy, you know, when I when I go out, I'm out and about a lot. I see a lot of different people. You know, we're all shaking hands and going to events and, and we have a lot of great friends and partners in the community. But then every now and then, you know, I meet somebody and I say, that person has it. Um, there's something special about her. And that's how I felt when I when I met you. And I'm just honored, um, you know, just to be your friend, be in your presence every time I'm in your presence. But Tammy, share a little bit about yourself, um, about the work you're doing at the Orange County Community Foundation. Tell, tell them who are you and what you are about and why this work is so important to you. Oh, thank you so much for the kind words, Gregory. And it's such a pleasure to be your friend as well. Um, again, I'm Tammy Tumbling, Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer here at the Orange County Community Foundation under the fearless leadership of our President and CEO, Shelly Haas. I'm responsible for overseeing all of our new donor relationships, our donor and community engagement work, marketing communications, people and culture. Technology is critical as well. But in essence, I'm responsible for a transformational change here at the foundation for our donors, but also for our employees. And the, all of this, I've only been with the foundation for four years, is by way of being a utility executive uh, working for Southern California Edison for over 21 years. So glad to be here with you today. Wow, wow, this shows the capacity that you have as a leader. Um, so we are certainly honored that you are um, in this region, working in this region. Well, we do know that something is rising um, and that something is called Juneteenth. And I know what Juneteenth means for me as a African-American man. It means freedom, it represents achievement. It represents community development, and I can just go down the list of, of why of why Juneteenth is so important. So this Monday, um, we are celebrating a very important holiday that in reality um, was just recognized as a national holiday on June 17, 2021. And so for those who are listening and watching and hearing us for the first time, um, what does Juneteenth mean to you, and, and why do you think this holiday is so important? Thank you for that question. You know, Gregory, it means freedom for me. It means access to opportunities. It means equality for me. And the reason I say that is most don't realize, but January 1st, 1863, the Emancipation Proclamation, it was enacted by President Abraham Lincoln, which enacted uh, the possibility for all slaves to be free. About 4 million slaves were freed at that time, wow. but not all slaves. Yeah. Not until Juneteenth, 1865. Two years later, Union troops marched into Galveston, Texas, and then further enacted the Emancipation Proclamation. And at that time, 250,000 additional slaves were freed two years later. So now, June 19th, Juneteenth yeah. is a day that we celebrate the freedom of all enslaved U.S. people um, around the world. Wow, such a powerful, powerful history. Um, and I know that you know some some people probably didn't know a lot of that background. So thank you for sharing that. Um, what I what I what I believe though which, that should also be documented um, in this history is just a few years ago um, you made a personal commitment, which is really unusual. Um, and is iconic and really in, in, in many ways that you made a, per, a very personal decision to commemorate this holiday in a very unique way. Um, can you share with the audience um, what that what, what that was and and what motivated you? What inspired you to do that? Sure, absolutely. So on Juneteenth, twenty twenty, the Orange County Community Foundation launched our first fund for African-Americans by their first African-American philanthropist. 
specifically for addressing issues that we weren't equipped to address initially. And that was after watching the senseless deaths of George Floyd, Ahmaud Aubrey, and Breonna Taylor. And yes, I still say those names. We just celebrated uh, the birthday last week of Breonna Taylor. Uh, the world is still watching. But that rung true with me in a way that I wanted to do something special. And it was actually through setting up a fund. So I took $25,000 of my own resources mm -hmm. and set up a fund at the Orange County Community Foundation called the African American Alliance Fund. And that was really important that I did that because it does two things. It raises awareness about issues that are facing the African American community, but it also creates a positive opportunity for all of us to rally around it, regardless of your socioeconomic status, your where you live ge uh, geographically, but it created a bridge from donors back to black communities and other community partners to each other inside of Orange County and outside of Orange County, the bridges have been created. Wow, wow. But you know, as we all know, and as you already know that it didn't stop there. Um, you know, it was amazing that, and as I say, I think is iconic um, because a lot of, uh, there's not a lot of folks in the community who would take that step and take that risk of using their own funds to start something that was gonna be so powerful. And I'm not even sure you knew the impact was really going to have, um, and we'll get into that in a second. But I know for our organization, for Capo C, we were grateful for that early support. We were inspired by that, by, by your story, by um, by your leadership, um, to, and, to, and then uh, along with that, to be part of the early funding of that. And so it allowed us to create our internal journey. Um, now we have something called the Change Agents. And which is really our, our formalized DEI group. Um, they meet every month. Um, they have a president and a vice president. I mean, they're really organized. They created a DEI statement for our organization that's part of our DNA. Um, and, and so in three years, you know, that's been some of the impact that it's had on our organization. But you know, you know all the stories. You know, you know, you've talked to multiple organizations. Share with us some of the impact that you're seeing, um, some of the organizations that were uh, blessed to, to, to be part of the funding. Um, what are some examples of the impact that you're seeing based on your decision back in 2020? Oh, my gosh. You know, it's been such a wonderful journey to meet all of you. I remember, um, just as you did, I think we may have met at the Black Chamber of Commerce event. Yes. I think that was maybe three or four years ago. I was very new to the Orange County Community Foundation and it was in February or, or January, but it was just before the start of the pandemic. Yeah. And I walked into a room and I could not find our African-American leaders. I'm here in Orange County trying to figure out where my tribe might be. And when I walked into that room at the Black Chamber of Commerce event, um, I think it was their future leaders luncheon. Um, there you all were. <laughs> Everyone was there, but I didn't know anyone. And I felt as if I found the Black community in one place, which I understood that it's like 2% is the African-American demographic here in Orange County, but not that day. It was wonderful to meet all of you. So once I set up the African-American Alliance Fund, we started with $25,000, but because of the generosity of our Orange County donors, uh, corporations and other community foundations and other nonprofits, we have raised in three years over six hundred eighty thousand dollars for the wow. black community. Wow! And it's so exciting. And we convene all of our African American leaders now. There's about fifty African American leaders inside of Orange County and in surrounding communities that have joined hands together to try to address issues collectively mm -hmm. that are actually impacting not just Orange County but the African-American community overall. And as of today, we, um, when we get to Juneteenth 2020, we always announce our new grants where mm -hmm. we will be announcing 20 more grantees. We will be giving away about $146,000 collectively. Wow. But over the three years of being in existence, we have given away over half a million dollars back to mm -hmm. black led or black serving communities 
in Orange County mm. or outside of Orange County and other counties where they serve African Americans or African Americans lead. Wow. So exciting. It's I'm so happy. exciting. I'm I mean, so happy for yeah. you guys. Well, just to hear those numbers, again, started out with a dream. You inspired all of us. Um, you were motivated to invest. And now the impact that's having um, throughout throughout the whole region, not just Orange County, but it's happening throughout throughout the region. So even though we are 2% here in, in Orange County, we small, but we mighty. Um, and you've certainly made, and made us stronger. So we appreciate that. But you know, one of the reasons why I feel you know, this work is so important um, um, because of the equity issues that I believe that it, that it really brings. And I know for our organization, um, without, you know, you, you, we always hear, you know, the, the cliche, it takes a village. It takes a village to make things happen. And, um, you know, we need the business community. We need government. We need nonprofits. We, 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 we need all these different entities. But why does philanthropy play a major role in kind of helping create the type of equity that's so needed in our community? I think for me personally, uh, philanthropy plays a critical role because I relied heavily on philanthropy as a young kid growing up. Mm -hmm. um, before you now, I am the executive vice president, chief operating officer. I was a utility executive at Southern California Edison. But before all of those things, I was just a welfare teen mom, former foster kid, a uh, kid straight out of Compton. Wow. And it was because of the generosity of the community and neighbors and education institutions that I was able to go from being a 17 year old teen mom and a parent because I lost my mother at the age of 19 and there were three brothers and sisters underneath me. So instead of us going back into or sending them back into the foster care system, I took custody of them. But it was it was one of the most rewarding things I could have done as their big sister is to keep my brothers and sisters together. But it wasn't done by myself. It was done by the village that you mentioned. Mm. It was done by the community. Nonprofit mm. organizations were there to help uh, my family and I be successful and thrive in life. So when I look back on where I've been, I've come a long, long way to be here in front of you today. But yeah. it's through the generosity of philanthropy, community, and, and family. Wow. Wow. You know, it's interesting hearing your story, um, and I've heard it before, but hearing your story again just r reminds me of my own story growing up. Um, um, shout out to New Jersey, but but growing up in, in, in a similar community um, as you, being a teenage dad, all those things. But now that I'm here um, and understand better the relationship between equity um, and poverty, between racial equity and poverty. And, um, but I had to learn that. And I always, I always tell people it, it is a bad marriage, um, but they are, they, are, they are joined together in a way that we don't want them to be. Can you speak more about that relationship between, between equity and poverty? Absolutely. When I think about the African-American Alliance Fund, I was very intentional and very deliberate with who it would serve and where the service would be provided. But also I step back and use my own personal experience to think about one, my family and I grew up in poverty, but where was it not equitable? Where was it where we needed opportunity and access that we did not have? Mm -hmm. That could have probably got us out of our situation if it were equitable. So the African-American Alliance Fund primarily funds programs that are led or serving organizations that focus on uh, education, equitable education, mm. you know, school systems are yeah. not equitable, yeah. um, focused on health. Yeah. When you think about the recent uh, pandemic, what demographic took the greatest hit? It was the demographic that had the most underlying health conditions. So pre conditions, and that was the black community. Yeah. And then you have human services. That's everything, anything where we need wraparound services, we want those to be equitable as well so that the black community can thrive. And then you think about economic business development. Yep. What if we could get more entrepreneurs yep. that were in the African-American community and more entrepreneurs that, are, that can have 
access to business loans um, and the other things that uh, others are receiving. And then the last is civic engagement. We all know that there are a lot of policies that are written to keep things unequitable. And we wanna make sure that we're doing things and we're investing in those five areas for the African-American Alliance Fund, because that's where I believe that poverty is equivalent to, or their equity, there is a tie, but let's fund programs and services that are helping to bridge that gap uh, between uh, full equity and poverty. Wow, wow. Well, you, you, talk, you talked about those five areas and then you, know, you also mentioned civic engagement. Um, which I think is really, really important because you don't have to be part of an organization or a business or even in government to 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 be engaged. But what are some ways, Tammy, that um, our community members can can create more inclusivity um, in their daily lives as we talk about equity and have this conversation? The first thing that I think that should be done is education. In order for anyone to engage, the first thing they should do is to educate themselves about what the issues are in other communities. And if you say those things do not impact you or doesn't have anything to do with me, those are the folks that need the most education because we're all here. When George Floyd lost his life, that was not a black thing. That was yeah. a, that dealt with humanity. Yeah. That dealt with getting a greater understanding about why George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery and Breonna Taylor, their judge, jury and executioners happen right there in their own neighborhoods. Wow. Did not go through a judicial system. So what if what if we could step back and think about things in more of a humanitarian way yeah. than in a black way or white or Asian or Latino? We're all folks. We're all human. We're all here together. We all have one red heart. Yes. That yes. beats the same way. Right. So I would recommend learning more about other demographics. And I do every day. I have my, uh, when I think of my brothers and sisters from another mother, right. we're all different colors and from ethnic, different ethnic backgrounds and different socioeconomic backgrounds. But I learn something every day from someone who's different from me. And wow. so I would recommend that people really get out there and get more education. And secondly, get uncomfortable. Yeah get uncomfortable because if you can get uncomfortable that means that change is is, is happening with inside your either your heart or inside your mind but change is happening so i say dig in whatever makes you feel uncomfortable it's usually because of lack of knowledge or lack of information yeah learn that's right learn. that's right that's right that's powerful um i know as we close and we can have this conversation all day um, oh, absolutely <laughs> I'm, I'm reminded of George Floyd and the impact that it had on me as a black man. I wept like a baby um, because it just impacted me in, in such a very powerful, emotional, spiritual, um, and it's in so many different ways. It had a great impact on my life watching it. And then as I shared with my team, um, how it affected me, we had all all staff meeting, we call it a town hall. And I shared some more, some of our team members shared as well. Um, but it also helped me educate myself. There were some things I needed to do. There were some things I was uncomfortable with. There were some things I was wrestling with as it related to equity and, and um, um, especially racial equity that to come to grips with. So I appreciate you talking about education and how we need to get uncomfortable um, with one another so that we can really grow. So that's, that's really important. But as we close out, can you share with those who are watching um, what you feel is the best way to recognize Juneteenth? What's the best way to celebrate this, this national holiday? Um, and how do we honor those um, whose lives have been impacted by slavery? We can honor those that have been impacted by slavery by getting out there and celebrating. Over the weekends, on the Saturday uh, uh, before Juneteenth, everyone's out. They're having uh, barbecues and at the parks. There's music. There's love, laughter, and fun. Yeah. Be a part of your community where it's happening. And I know for sure in Orange County, there's quite a few events going on. Uh, this Saturday, the Arts and Learning Conservatory is hosting a beautiful, this is their second annual gospel uh, concert. And it's at Chapman University. 
-hmm. get out. There's so many things happening and be a part of the celebration that your neighbors and your friends and your colleagues, everybody's free. Everyone's here together. Remember, it's not a black thing. This is a humanitarian thing. Yes. We want to stick together. And how we do it is by joining, volunteering, um, philanthropy, giving back. But for this weekend, just get out and have fun. Meet the people in your community that you've not had a chance to meet before by participating in some of the activities going on for Juneteenth. In essence, just get out there and have some fun and get a little uncomfortable. That's, that's an awesome, awesome message. I plan to get out there. Um, I plan to, to to attend a few a few events and and certainly celebrate. But Tammy, I just want to thank you um, for uh, this very engaging conversation. Thank you for your heart that just comes through um, in so many different ways. And as I said, in every room you're in, and I want to thank th those who are watching. Thank you for watching and taking a moment um, to listen to this conversation. I hope that this inspires you to have your own conversations with your colleagues, with your friends, with your 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 family members, um, so that we can all get uncomfortable, so we can grow, but at the same time, we're gonna celebrate um, Juneteenth. Um, Tammy, any any final thoughts before we close out? Just final thoughts is make sure that you also, all of the things that we've talked about today require courage. Yeah. Yeah. It requires courage. And so be uncomfortable, but be courageous along the way. Go out and hang out with your communities. Be, cour be courageous to walk up to someone that looks different from you and say hello. Mm -hmm. Ask them how their day might be going. But just make the connections wherever you can. And all of that takes courage. I love it. I love it. I'm, a, I'm still in that word, courage. Uh, be of good courage. Um, get in good trouble. Be of good courage. Be uncomfortable. Right. Do all of those things. Um, so, Tammy, thank you so much again for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you, those who are watching. Um, and happy Juneteenth. Thanks happy Juneteenth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.